De interview is met Christian, Christian Boesdieker, de senior VP for Service in Germany and Europe. <coughs> and we, um, we will uh, cover some service-related service topics, uh, touch a bit on the history, but then look more at the current situation and what the future might bring. You have this uh, slogan, uh, I think it is called uh, predict to prevent. Is that related to predictive maintenance? And what are the key elements of this, uh, of, of this predict to prevent uh, program you have? Yeah, um, you're right. Isa. So, so what we do there is um, we believe the better we can uh, predict a failure to happen, the better we can maintain uh, the turbine. Uh, if we're able to 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 determine when a certain component in a certain wind farm in a certain turbine fails, we can take early action and make sure that the failure is not growing bigger. Um, and we can plan the activities. Uh, just take the example when you have a main bearing exchange somewhere in uh, Northern Europe, 150 meter tower, uh, it's, it's winter time. When that happens unplanned, uh, you have a big loss of production. You need to buy the crane on the spot market. You need to get the people from somewhere. You probably have daylight issues. Whereas when you see that uh, months early, you can plan that into a low wind. Uh, period um, uh, with uh, crane and teams book well in advance um, and also uh, the materials you can have ready. So so that's probably a very tangible example of, of how that helps us. So and how does uh, digitalization help you at the moment uh, compared to 10 years ago for better predicting the condition of a turbine and what could happen? Can you now, for instance, uh, in advance, uh, notice that a certain component starts to fail, for instance? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there is, uh, of course, the traditional vibration anal analysis, so the CMS systems uh, which you've got, which uh, which have been around for a long time, but also there we extend the use year by year by year. So that means we can see more failures. And then also uh, what we do is uh, SCADA-based uh, predictive maintenance, where we can see failures uh, happening uh, in advance, yes. So, and uh, now, does it also help that turbines get more service-friendly? Uh, does that also help to better upkeep of turbines? For instance, uh, could, you, could you give an example on how technicians in the past were entering the hub and how they would do it at the moment because you you were also mentioning very sometimes very poor daylight situations and bad weather so what are some noticeable changes you have observed in the past years you know let's say 10 years ago and compared to today yeah uh there has of course been massive massive development and you you mentioned the uh the hub access so if you want to get inside the hub um when we look back to our n60 turbines and that's already above uh one one megawatt um to access the hub what you had to do is go on top of the nacelle uh, attach a rope ladder throw that in front of the uh, hub and then climb down the next generation there was already a fixed ladder on that nacelle a generation later, there was a hatch on top of the hub. So you would go on the roof of the nacelle and enter the uh, hub uh, from, from the top. And then from the data generation onwards, it's, it's possible to access the hub from, from, from inside the nacelle. That has, of course, also to do with the growth of the turbines, but certainly also with the fact that our engineers, our service engineers are part of that development teams. And that makes a massive difference uh, when you have adverse weather conditions, for instance, and, and need to go into the hub. Uh, looking into into the um, uh, delivery of uh, components, you know, we can imagine that for a gearbox, you, know, you would need a heavy, an, an heavy truck or a heavy trailer to, to transport it, but you, there could also be uh, you know, components like print boards and say a mechanic is working on a wind turbine and they discover that the print board has a crack. Do you think it could be feasible in the future to use uh, a drone to deliver such components like uh, what Amazon already seems to do or plans to do with books and other uh, things. Is that something 
you see as an extension to, uh, to uh, for instance, the blade inspection with drones. Could drones have a wider use in future? What really matters for us is that our people are safe and also that we drive down the cost of energy, the drive down the cost per kilowatt hour. And there are many things we can do. We can do more predictive, we can plan better, we can have smarter repair uh, solutions uh, to do that. We can optimize maintenance cycles. So there's, there's a plenty of opportunities of things we are doing and what the team is doing every day. Can drones for spare parts delivery um, be a part uh, also of that uh, to the side? Why not? Why not? Um, it can always be an opportunity. But rather than one specific technology that eventually drives it, I believe that fundamentally what changes it is, is the big team that every day sees the challenges, finds solutions, and most importantly, gets, gets it done. And, and this continuous improvement cycle is, is, is super important to us. Um, what has struck you as an a major change or a major improvement in the time when you were involved with service at the Nordex Group? It's probably how fast technical developments uh, can go. Uh, when I think back a, a couple of uh, years, um, having five, six megawatt turbines onshore, um, uh, that was kind of felt out of reach. And now they are there, now we are servicing them, and now they are producing uh, 15, 20 gigawatt hours a year. And that's that's a fundamental change also how we, to how we do service business. So there are many factors involved, not only a good modular design, but also a service capability that is really in harmony and fully capable of doing the right service during an extended lifetime up to 20 to 35 years. 35 years of Nordex and perhaps a turbine lifetime of 35 years also in future. Christian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Isa. It was a pleasure likewise.